Marilee is going to talk about exploring feedback practices within the learning through participation signature, signature pedagogy of allied health placements. And I see you've already got your presentation up. Thanks. Try again. Thank you, Lynn and team, for this opportunity to present on our research from our paper that's currently under review. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and culture. I'm currently on the land of the Birbirigal people of the Eora Nation and I pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to acknowledge my co-authors as listed on this slide, the wider research team and the ASIN funding that supported this project. So Moving down through the slides, the findings I'm presenting came from a study investigating the implementation of a near peer mentoring model in occupational therapy and physiotherapy clinical placements in large tertiary hospitals. As shown in this diagram, senior and junior students were paired at their own level and then paired in a senior junior relationship with the clinical educators having overall responsibility for all students. The junior students' one to two week placement was scheduled towards the end of the senior students' five to eight week placement. So whilst a familiar model in medical and nursing education, it was and is still relatively novel for allied health. Senior students are not ex routinely expected to support the learning of their junior colleagues in placement. While the study itself focused on a number of outcomes, what became evident early in the analysis phase was the rich descriptions of the feedback practices of senior and junior students from the perspective of all involved. It begged for a deeper investigation. So using this data subset, we aim to not only examine how feedback is enacted in allied health clinical placements, but also to contribute to the debate of, as to whether there could be a unified signature pedagogy for clinical education. For those not familiar with Shulman's work, this concept covers the uniquely different ways that profession-specific curricula, such as law, medicine, or occupational therapy, are structured to support students learning how to do, think, and value what practitioners in the field are doing, thinking, and valuing. Our methods involved post-placement interviews with students and educators, interview questions focused on their perceptions of the feedback experiences, for example, what knowledge and skills were needed to enable high quality feedback and what enabled or supported the development of these skills. We also asked the senior students to record up to three feedback sessions with their junior student over the placement. These students were interviewed individually, selecting parts of their recorded session to replay to the interviewer. Probing questions were used to assist the senior student to reflect on what might be influencing their actions prior to and during this feedback. So chemist's theory of practice architecture was used as a framework for analysis through which we were able to identify the sayings, doings and relatings of feedback practices. Two main practices were identified. The first was that the senior students aimed for a positive learning experience through creating a comfortable learning environment. To do this, they aimed to build trust and show that they were available and responsive to the junior students. Even though the educators also aimed for this as well, it was clear that the junior students felt more comfortable engaging with and learning from their senior student. The second relates to the senior and junior students' perceptions of what they considered was high quality feedback that would support junior student learning. For most senior students, this was their first formal mentoring role and they developed their own feedback style through this experience. Their style was informed by their current and previous educator practices, those of their senior peer, as well as those provided in a resource. They also reflected on their own experiences and adjusted their practice to what they imagined the junior student would appreciate and what they might need. Conditions that contributed to or supported the feedback practices was implicit in the design of the model. The paired relationships meant that the students spent most of their days together as the senior students modeled how things were done, as well as assisting the junior student to do alongside them. Being together provided many opportunities for feedback conversations. Both senior and junior students aimed for the ideal, high frequency, immediate feedback, often occurring while moving between patients. Being together so much also appeared to assist with the development of trust. Senior students were not responsible for the formal assessment of their juniors, and this seemed to allow for a level of honesty between the students, which appeared to support the learning needs of both senior and junior students. Oh, and as I've already described, 
The practices were influenced by previous role models, the senior students' own experiences, and beliefs about high quality feedback, matching this knowledge and experience with what they perceived the junior student might need. So did we find evidence of a unique single signature pedagogy in allied health education? Yes. There were common feedback practices across physiotherapy and occupational therapy, including achieving the ideal of immediate specific feedback. These practices offer support the idea of participatory learning proposed by Jensen and Pertillo as a signature pedagogy for clinical education. That is, learning through participation is supported both by the educator-student relationship as well as the identification and use of learning opportunities to develop student competence. This occurs within a social and physical environment that sustains both the relationship as well as engagement in tasks and activities. So what's next? From here, we are starting to think about the following. What is the effect of this near peer mentoring experience on senior students' development as they move into begin being future clinicians and clinical educators? Is it possible for them to keep up with what they believe is the ideal of high quality feedback and the support to clinical educators? How can we help them develop the skills and feedback conversations and perhaps help them and their students to separate the roles of mentors and assessors? And probably most importantly, how can we continue to support students' feedback literacy development in the placement environment? In the placement environment and some references. So thank you.